Hello and welcome to Celebrate Recovery here at The Common Table Online. I'm Zach. I'm so glad that you're here tonight. If this is your first time joining us for Celebrate Recovery, uh, we are a Christ-centered and Bible-based 12-step recovery program designed for anyone that is dealing with a hurt, a habit, or a hang-up of any kind. We come together to be open and honest, be real people, and look to progress in our faith, our growth, and our recovery together and take the next step for us. If this is your first time on Common Table Online, you'll notice below or to the right of your screen, there is a live chat going on. Please feel free to jump in. Do not feel obligated to join in the chat, but if you want to create a unique or specific name for yourself, you can jump right in and, and enjoy the conversation. There is also a live prayer button that will open up a new tab on your browser and give you the opportunity to have a private and live prayer with one of the Celebrate Recovery leaders. And then lastly, there's a notes tab where you can find some additional information on Celebrate Recovery as well as some contact information for our group. One last thing to mention, after the message is over tonight, we will pivot over to our open share groups on Zoom with our male and female specific groups. If you do not have information and would like to attend, please let us know in the chat or through the prayer bu button or reach out to myself through the contact information and notes tab and I'll be sure to get you the correct information so you can join in. Those open share groups are a safe and confidential place for us to share what's going on in our lives and uh, to share both the things we're struggling with or dealing with, as well as any successes or positive steps we've had in our lives. So I hope you take advantage of that and join with us after the message tonight. Without further ado, let's open up tonight as we go together and center our hearts and minds and join together in some time of music and worship. It's you I live for 
I am a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. My pride and my desire for perfection have led me to use and abuse drugs and alcohol, as well as other compulsive behaviors, uh, and to battle anxiety and anger. And I also deal with the symptoms of depression. And my name is Zach. Like I said before, I'm so glad that we're here tonight for another week of Celebrate Recovery. I want to open us up with a word of prayer before we get into the message for tonight. So let's go to God together in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time, this space tonight. I just ask that you guide my words and what I have to share tonight and help all of us to be open to anything that you have in store for us. Any any message, any words that you have, any way to lead us, motivate us or encourage us tonight. I just pray that we can come to this space with an open heart and an open mind and be directed and find what our next step is to progress in our growth, our faith, our recovery. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. Martin Luther King Jr. has a beautiful quote that I love. It might be my favorite from him. And he said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, 
then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, keep moving forward. But whatever you do, keep moving forward. In scripture, the Apostle Paul often describes our faith journey as a race. I find it pretty interesting for a few reasons, but one mainly in particular, when I think about our our journey being described as a, a race, and that's our recovery, our faith journey, our spiritual mental health growth. Um, and the one thing that I find really interesting is when you think of a race, do you ever stop? Like whenever, if you've ever been in a race, is it designed to be stopped before the end? Do you ever take a pause or a break? I don't think so. I'm thinking of competitions and sprinters or long distance runners, whether you're running a hundred yard dash or a two mile race, do they ever stop running? And just as Martin Luther King Jr.'s quote encourages to continue pressing forward no matter what, but whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. I think the Apostle Paul's idea of faith being running a race gives us the idea that it needs to be a constant progression in our lives, right? We need to constantly be taking the next step or the next leap or running the next part of our race. And I believe that there is one vital component that we need to maintain if we are to constantly be pressing forward in our faith in our growth, and in our recovery, I believe we need to maintain a sense of urgency. We need to have urgency. In discussing the second coming in Mark chapter 13, verse 33 says, be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. And I'm thinking, uh, recently I was doing a devotional plan with a friend and actually let me take a quick digression because this is what's cool about the bridging and about the power of our faith and being involved that happens. So in the midst of social distancing and what is seclusion, I made a friend through the common table online community. If you're not familiar outside of Celebrate Recovery, Common Table has uh, weekly services on Wednesday night, Saturday night. Uh, Faith Point is a church that meets on Sunday morning. And then there are a host of other services that happen sporadically or consistently as well. And being part of this Common Table online community, um, I was introduced and started engaging in conversation with a new person with a new friend and then being involved in group devotional plans through the U version Bible app. Uh, we were also going through these plans together and we started to become friends. We were engaging in conversations or sharing our thoughts on these daily devotions um, and having some very fruitful conversations. And we started feeding off one another with other devotions, we were going through devotionals on our own. And uh, so if I was picking a random devotional on the YouVersion Bible app that I was doing, I noticed that my new friend was commenting on it and asking how it was, if it was worth reading, if we should be doing it as a group. And now I have one more person of faith to engage with, to uh, have edifying conversation with, to progress towards Christ alongside. That's the beauty of this connection we've made through technology. And even though we're forced for, into seclusion and social distancing, face-to-face -face interactions aren't as common, we still have the opportunity to come together and uh, be together virtually or digitally or however you make that work. I just think that's a great part. So back to the point I was going to make, uh, this new friend and I began a devotional together. And the one day the devotional and the scripture we were focused on um, led me to feel convicted. 
Okay. Uh, we are focusing on Luke chapter 21, similar to Mark 13, where it talks about the coming of the end times and the second coming of Christ. And the scriptures, the devotion, and the thought-provoking questions that were part of it had me convicted regor- regarding the urgency with which I live out my faith, the urgency that I'm working on my own recovery. I found myself questioning. So if you know me well, you know I spend a lot of my time in ministry. So I have a full-time job, but then in addition to that, I lead this Celebrate Recovery ministry. I volunteer as part of finance team and leadership team at Faith Point in Urbana. Um, And I try and get involved in as many ways as I can in a faith aspect just to keep myself progressing forward. So I'm I'm involved in a lot of ministry outside of my normal work. But I started feeling this conviction and questioning. Do I take advantage of every opportunity I have to share the message or plant seeds? Do I limit it? limit it to my involvement at church or at Celebrate Recovery? Is that the only place that I express myself or share my message? Have I found myself in a place of being content, just setting a good example or just trying to live a good life? And in doing so, have I relegated myself to not actively looking for opportunities to engage the people that I encounter every day? with this good news, with this message that I firmly believe in? Am I living my daily life with a sense of urgency? And if I begin to improve that urgency, if I begin to live with more of a sense of urgency, how would that impact how I live out the eighth principle of Celebrate Recovery? The eighth principle of Celebrate Recovery says, Yield myself to God to be used to bring this good news to others, both by my example and my words. Yield myself to God to be used to bring this good news to others. I believe that we need to have a sense of urgency, not just in the big things, the big progression of our recovery and our faith, But I think we need to have a sense of urgency in the little things, the things that feel more like everyday or simpler things in our lives. The thoughts we have, the actions we take, or the willingness to act that we have. I think we need to find a way to increase and improve our sense of urgency in these simple things. So if you have a friend that you haven't spoken to in a while and they're on your mind, you're thinking about them. If we have a sense of urgency, maybe we take action by picking up the phone and giving them a call or sending them a note. Maybe they're on our mind for a reason. Maybe we can be a voice of encouragement to them. Maybe they're struggling with something that the world doesn't know about and they need somebody to reach out to them. If you're feeling sadness for people that are less fortunate than you. Do something to give back, have a sense of urgency. Maybe you can find something to donate. Maybe you can buy something to donate. Maybe you can volunteer in some way, or maybe you can make something for them, sending a card, doing something, uh, taking the action to reach out. If you're having a good day, if you're feeling encouraged, full of hope, If you have a day where you are sober, when sobriety has been a challenge for you, write a post or something on social media. Call your sponsor, your sponsee, your accountability partner. Share that good day, that good feeling, that motivation that you have with someone else. Don't wait for somebody to reach out and ask you. Have that sense of urgency that this is such a good thing. I need to share it, right? That's how we have that urgency and what it could do for us in our simple things, everyday things. You can be a gift to others. You can be encouragement. You can be hope for others. 
And just like you can make a positive difference in the people in the world around you, if we can function with an improved sense of urgency in our lives, I think we can make a positive difference in ourselves as well. We're fed by giving back, but just also with our health as well. If you're feeling hopeless or overwhelmed, reach out to somebody that you trust. Have a sense of urgency to reach out. Share what's going on. Seek out support. If anxiety is overwhelming you, and I am guilty that I get overwhelmed by anxiety at times, or if you're deep into a state of depression, seek help. Find a willingness to open up. Have a sense of urgency about what you're struggling with. Tell someone you trust. See a professional. Be open to medication. Make use of the tools that have been placed in our world to help us grow in our health, to help us grow in our recovery. C.S. Lewis has a beautiful quote. He says, I have learned now that while those who speak about one's miseries usually hurt, those who keep silence hurt more. Let me say that again because I fumbled all my words. C.S. Lewis said, I have learned now that while those who speak about one's miseries usually hurt, those who keep silent hurt more. We have a saying here, celebrate recovery, and at AA and NA and SA, You're only as sick as your secrets. If you keep something tucked away, it's going to only grow and worsen. And we get caught up in our head making something bigger than what it is. But if we live with a sense of urgency that we need to share and get things off our chest, it might make us act quicker, right? We can share with urgency. Share our hurts our habits, and our hang-ups to those we trust, that we can find healing and growth. Sharing our stories as well. Not just what's going on now, but some of the things you've been through. I have a tendency to minimize everything I've been through in life and just think, ah, it's normal. It's something everybody's gone through. But that may not be the case. I think we're called to share our stories. And our hurt can become a miracle if we're willing to share it. Our pain can become a blessing for others. Our challenges can become a story of perseverance and encouragement to others. If we yield ourselves to God to be used with a sense of urgency, there's no limit to the change that can come. And if we think we're really struggling and we open up and share about it, you never know. That other person may listen to what you're sharing and say, gosh, I can't believe what they're going through. And they're still willing to commit and be here, be present and share what's going on and look for ways to grow. Because if I was going through that, I might have given up a long time ago. We can be an encouragement. And as we encourage others And we see that encouragement happen in others. It will only motivate us more if we have a willingness to be urgent about what's going on in our lives. We might find that healing comes quicker, that growth comes quicker for us. We might find new doors and opportunities opening up for us. If we yield ourselves to be used by God, And if we have a sense of urgency, there is no limit to the change that can come about. Let's pivot over. Let's go to Carol as she leads us through the serenity prayer. Hi, everyone. I am a grateful believer in Jesus Christ who struggles with depression, anxiety, and being the daughter of an alcoholic. My name is Carol. Please join with me now as I read the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, 
enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did the sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. Thank you, Carol. As I think about urgency, one thing comes to mind for me, and this urgency ties right in with yield ourselves to God to be used to carry this message to others, both by our word and our example. Um, Several years ago when I was in Guatemala, and you may have heard this story before, but a missionary was asking me about my background, about my story, and I started to share some of my uh, personal story, and I probably abbreviated it, fumbled over it, but at the end of the time when I was telling her about myself and my story, uh, she said one thing to me. She said, you need to share that. She said, remember, God cannot steer a parked car. God cannot steer a parked car. And this is where I am. I think with, if I have urgency, I'm more likely to act, right? I'm, I'm more willing to take the first step because for somebody who is a perfectionist and wants everything to line up just right before acting, I get tempted to have excuses. I get tempted to say, it's not the right time. I've got to hone this in better. I've got to think more about it. And, uh, or I'm just not ready to serve in this way. Or if I'm thinking about talking to somebody else and think, what if they react this way or that way? And I think for me personally, I get too caught up in that. Think tricking myself and playing these games inside my head uh, to stay where I am and not act. And I've got to be willing to take that first step, right? We've got to be willing to take a step not knowing what the outcome is going to be. And that's where faith comes in. We trust in the things we do not know and we hope for the best. And if we're willing to trust in the things we do not know, we don't know the outcome. We have faith that God's going to see us through it. Remember, God can't steer a parked car. It's our job to turn on the car and start it and press that accelerator and get it moving so that it can be steered and directed in the right way. And in order to do that, we need to have a sense of urgency about what's going on in our lives so that we can have this level of urgency and progress in our faith, in our growth, and in our recovery. As we close tonight, I want to remind you that we're going to have our open share groups on Zoom as soon as this is over. We'll wait for a few minutes as you pivot over. Let us know if you need the information. Please reach out if there's anything you want to talk about. Uh, My phone, my email, I am always available. I will make myself available for you. If you have questions, if you need someone to share with, just reach out. Uh, And I just pray that we together can have a sense of urgency so that we can see growth and healing in our lives and in the world around us. So let's pray together how we can find that sense of urgency and take it into the world with us on a daily basis. I'll be praying for you. Have a great week.